students welcome you all our today math online class i am a friend teacher of class 3 welcome you again our math online class at first i would like to extend my warmest wishes for you my dear lovely students i hope all of you are fit and fine by the grace of almighty allah okay now i am starting our class get ready for the today's class before going to start our today's lesson i am asking you that what was our previous topic yes our previous topic was geometry and i hope that all of you have learned the definition of some quadrilateral line point and you have practiced how to draw this shapes okay so can i ask you some question from our previous lesson yes our uh, get ready for the first question the first question for you that is what is called line give me the answer what is called line yes very good you give the answer correctly that is line is a moving point it has only length but no end point okay look at the picture of line and you ca we can increase the line in both direction in left side and right side also it has no end point okay so the next question for you that what is called square my dear students i know that already we have uh, come to know about different types of quadrilateral and square is one of the quadrilateral so can you tell me what is called square yes very good your answer is absolutely correct in the definition of square is a quadrilateral in which all sides are equal in length and every angle is right angle that is 90 degree is called square so student whenever you uh, draw the square shape that time we have to uh, be attentive about the definition that every angle should be right angle here and i know that already you have practiced that how to draw different kinds of angle in our second term syllabus so we can draw the square according to the definition properly that every angle of square is right angle that is 90 degree it should be okay so let's move our today's topic now before going to start our today's topic i want to tell you that the learning objective of our our today's topic and you know that today our topic name is short question answer and by learning the short question answer the students will able to know the basic information about the third term syllabus chapter okay because in short question answer is nothing new for you uh, whenever we have discussed any chapter all the time we discussed about the basic information about the chapter okay so today our serial number is 65 now i am starting our today's class today our topic is short question answer and i will show you 1 to 20 short question answer for you and i'll know that already you have got the short question answer sheet from your school and i will give you the answer of this short question today so get ready for our today's class the first question what is called the number below the bar sign so how to be the answer very easy question for you we know the number below the bar sign is called denominator yes now the second question for you what is 
the equivalent fraction of the fraction 3 by 5. What is the equivalent fraction of the fraction 3 by 5? So students you know that equivalent fraction means their value will be always same. And I hope that all of you know the rules that how can you find out the equivalent fraction. Yes, the rule says we have to multiply both numerator and denominator by the same num multiplication table. Okay. So, here they have given you the fraction 3 by 5. So, what will be the answer? I am starting the times table of 2 at first. So, it will be 3 to the 6, 5 to the 10. So, our answer has come 6 by 10. So, the next question. Question number 3. What is called the measuring unit of weight? So, can you guess from which chapter this question has come? Yes, it is from our measurement chapter. And already we have come to know about the unit of different types of measurement like weight measurement, length measurement and volume of liquid time measurement. So, here they are asking about weight measurement unit. So, what is the unit of weight measurement? Already we have known that is gram or kilogram. So, our answer is gram or kilogram. So, the question number 4 I am discussing now. Question number 4 Which unit you will use to measure the length of dough? So, students uh, can you under, uh, come to know that they are asking you length of dough. So, from which measurement they have asked you the question? Yes, from the length measurement. Because they have asked you length of a door. We know the length uh, measurement uh, example is like door, height of your friend, uh, like uh, pencil box length, your window length also. Isn't it? Uh, so, it is the length measurement, length of a door. So, what is the length measurement you need? Can you remember? Yes. So, length measurement you need meter, centimeter, kilometer, decameter, so many units. So, here our answer will be meter because always we measure the door as a, then we have to use the unit meter. Okay. So, Write down this answer. Now, question number 5 for you. The question is, if denominator is 13 and numerator is 9, what will be the fraction? It is very easy. They have mentioned here denominator is 13 and numerator is 9. So, how can we place this number? Now, this is the question. I know that numerator number always we put it above the fraction bar. And denominator number always we place it below the fraction bar. So, I have uh, written the answer like this way 9 by 13. 9 is our numerator and 13 is our denominator. Okay, students? So, write down the answer 9 by 13 like this way. So, question number 6 for you. It is also from the fraction chapter. That is very easy question for you. What is called the number above the bar sign? Just now we have discussed this point. That the number above the bar sign is called numerator. Okay students? So, be careful about the spelling of numerator. Sometimes you make mistake in the spelling. Okay. So, what is the answer, spelling of numerator? N-U-M-E-R-A-T-U-R. Numerator. Okay. So, go for the next question. That is question number 7. What is the question number 7 for you? The question is Which figure 
he cannot draw without a center. So, uh, students, you have already completed the geometry chapter. And you have learned some definition of some geometrical shape. Isn't it? So, can you tell me that which figure we cannot draw without a center? Center is must to draw this figure. Yes, our answer is circle. Look at the picture of circle and there should be a center point. And by using this center point, we have to draw a circle. Okay. So, now question number 8 for you. One fifth of 30 days equal to there is a box. Fill in the box and days. Empty box is there. So, we have to find out the answer and put it in the box. Okay. So, one fifth of 30 days means how many days we have to find out. So, what should we do here? Here, we have to do the division. 30 days, 5 part will be what? Okay. So, how can I find out? By doing the division. So, 30 divided by 5. Which answer will come? If you read out the 5 times table, Yes, 5 0 is a 0, 5 1 is a 5, 5 2 is a 10, 5 3 is a 15, 5 4 is a 20, 5 5 is a 25, 5 6 is a 30. We got the answer, 6 is our quotient and 30 days, 1 fifth is 6 days. By doing the division, we can find out this answer. Okay, so now next question. Is question number 9. The 9 number question is in which quadrilateral opposite sides are equal and parallel? So answer will be what? Square? No. What will be the answer? Yes, we know the quadrilateral which has the opposite sides are equal that is rectangle. We know this very well that rectangle opposite sides are always equal and parallel. Look at the picture uh, uh, there, the rectangle picture. Here the length of this uh, line is equal the opposite sides. So this line opposite line is this one. So there are equal length and this line equal sides are there. Their length of the side is also equal and parallel okay their distance is also same the line distance so that's why our answer is rectangle okay so number question number question for you what is the numerator of this fraction here 7 by 18 so we have to find out that they have given you the fraction number 7 by 18 and in that number, fraction number, which one is numerator part? Here our answer is what? Very good, 7. We know the number above the fraction bar is called numerator. Here 7 is our numerator because 7 is, number is above our fraction bar. So our answer is 7. So, the uh, question number 11 for you. The question is, how will we express 7 nines in digit? Students, they have given you here the word uh, that is written 7 nines and we have to express it as a digit. Okay. So, they have given you the fraction uh, 7 nines. You know, uh, fraction number always we write like this way. In Whenever we have to write fraction number as a word we have to write like this way, 7 nines like uh, 2 thirds like this way isn't it so here they have given you in word that 7 nines and we have to express it as a digit so how can i write it yes you know uh, whenever we write the fraction number as a word always we write the numerator number the number above the bar sign we write it at first 
then we write the denominator's number. So here they have given you 7 nines. So at first we have to write 7 above the fraction bar and then we have to write 9 as our denominator. Okay. So our answer is will be like that. 7 by 9. Okay students. So now question number 12 for you. The question is if 1 hour equals to 60 minutes how many minutes will be there in one day? So dear student look at the question attentively. Here what should I do? To find out the minutes, total number of minutes, they have given you the information about 1 hour, 60 minutes. But we have to find out how many minutes in a day, one day. So here we have to convert day as hour. Okay. And we know that one day means how many hours? 24 hours. It will be the same thing. One day 24 hours or 24 hours one day. So if we convert it as an hour then it will be good for us for our calculation. So which method I have to apply here to find out the answer? Yes, we have to do here the multiplication to find out the answer. Because they have given you the information that one hour equal to 60 minutes. So, 24 hours will be how many minutes? How can I do it? It will be obviously more minutes. So, by doing the multiplication, we can find out the answer. And you can show the rough word that 60 multiplied by 24. And here there are two digit multiplier. So, we have to follow two steps to find out the answer. So, first step do 4 zeros are 0 and 4 6 are what? These are the 4 times table. 4 zeros are 0, 4 1s are 4, 4 2s are 8, 4 3s are 12, 4 4s are 16, 4 5s are 20, 4 6s are 24. So I got here 214. Now go to the next step. And you know next step which from which place we have to start? Yes, we have to start from the tens place. And here our multiplier is 2. So, look here, I am reading out the time table. 2 zeros are 0. 2 zeros are 0 and 2 6 will be what? Very easy. 2 1 are 2, 2 2 is 4, 2 3 is 6, 2 4 is 8, 2 5 is 10, 2 6 is 12. And I have written 12 here. So, now we have to add do the addition at the last of the multiplication. So, if we do the addition, what answer will come? Yes, our answer has come. That is 0 plus 0 is 0. Four, 0 plus 4 is 4, obviously. And 2, we have to uh, write here 2 because there is no number in the upper side. And also, we have to write 1 as there is no number in the upper part. So our answer at last has come 1440 minutes. So by doing the multiplication we have got the answer that one day means 1440 minutes. So this type of problem can come in your exam in a, as a short question answer. At that time you have to read out the question attentively. Okay. Now let's move for the next question. This is also look like a word problem. Simple. So what is the question? The question is. On Rafi's birthday. He gave 6 candies. To each classmate. There are 24 students. How many candies. Rafi distributed. Look at the question very attentively. That what information they have given you. They have given you the Rafi dis, uh, gave 6 candy to his each classmate. That means one classmate get, got 6 candy. And there are how many total students? 24 students. But there is a word distributed. Don't think so. This is the problem of division. 
Okay, because the question is for you how many candies roughly distributed. So it is the problem of not division. It is the what problem of multiplication. Okay, because we have to find out the total number of candies here. So the two students has twenty four, and every students got six candy. Every classmate got six candy. So total number of candy roughly distributed how much? How many? So by doing the multiplication, we can get the answer here. So we can show the rough work that twenty four multi twenty four multiplied by six. So our multiplier is six here. So we have to read out the six times table. So read out the six times table. Six four is a what? Six zero is a zero. Six one is a six. Six two is a twelve. Six three is a eighteen. Six four is a twenty four. Yes. Yeah, so I have written here twenty four or four, and two is my carrying number. So again, read out the six times table. That is six two zero. Six two zero will be what? Six one zero six six two zero twelve. But twelve is not my final answer because I am carrying uh, two at my hand. So it will be we have to add this carrying number with twelve. So it will be what? Twelve plus two, thirteen fourteen. So my answer is one hundred forty. Four, so one hundred forty-four candies Rafi total he distributed among his classmates. Okay, students. So I hope that all of you have understood this problem. Now the next question for you, and the next question is very easy question for you. That is, how many centimeter make a meter? So I know that all of you have uh, learned some formula to uh, solve the measurement problem, isn't it? So here there was a formula we have already memorized before. That that is what one meter means how many centimeter? Can you remember? Yes, one meter means hundred centimeter. That means hundred centimeter can make a one meter, and you know meter is a bigger unit than centimeter. So one our answer is one meter equal to hundred centimeter. Okay, students. Now question number fifteen for you. Question number fifteen. All of you look at the board. The question is. Also, very easy question for you. That how many hands are there in a clock? All of you know about the clock. That clock has how many hands? Yes, three hands. Can you tell me the hands name? Yes, very good. We know the clock has three hands. That is uh, hour, minute, second. Isn't it? So can you another question? Uh, can you tell me that about the clock hands? That is, uh, which hands is the longest among the three hand? Yes, the second hands is the longest hand of the clock. Always keep in mind. Okay, okay. Now I am telling you the next question. That is question number sixteen. Okay. The question is which unit you will use to measure the volume of one packet of chocolate milk. Do you like to eat chocolate milk? I hope so. That all of you like to drink chocolate milk. So now tell me what will be the answer. The unit. To measure the volume of one packet of chocolate milk, be attentive now. They have asking you about the liquid things you need. So, what will be the answer? We have already learned it before that the volume of liquid you need is milliliter. Very good. So, our answer is milliliter. Okay. So, the next question. Get ready for the next question. 
the question number 17 that is how many arms are there in quadrilateral i i know that already you have learned about different types of quadrilateral and the definition of quadrilateral also so all the all types of quadrilaterals how many arms arms means it is the same meaning of size okay so arms they are in a quadrilateral there are four arms that means four sides same thing okay so our answer is four arms we know all the quadrilateral has four sides or four arms okay so let's go for the next question that is question number 18 it is also very easy for you and it is the question for you write the two equivalent fraction of 6 by 7 already we have done before the equivalent fraction how can we find out so here we have to write two equivalent fractions okay so equivalent fraction you know the rules that same multiplication table we have to multiply both numerator and denominator so as we have to write two equivalent fraction i have to start from the two times table then i have to uh, read i have to multiply the next number by three times multiplication table okay so our answer is first number is read out the uh, two multiplication table that is 2 6 12 by 2 7 will be what 14 so first equivalent fraction is 12 by 14 and the next equivalent fraction here we have to multiply this uh, numerator and denominator by the multiplication table of 3 so what will be the answer next equivalent fraction that is 3 6 18 and the denominator will become 3 7 are what yes 21 so i got the next equivalent fraction is 18 by 21 so we got the two equivalent fraction here one is 12 by 14 and another number is 18 by 21 so write down so next question that is question number 19. It is from our time measurement segment. That is what do the question is for you. What do you say 12 midnight to 11.59 noon? Students, uh, whenever we say the time, always we use the word a or p.m. So today we will learn what does AM means, the elaborate form of AM and uh, elaborate form of PM also. But the first question is for you from question number 19. What do you say 12 midnight to 11.59 noon? So always we use from the midnight to noon, we use the word for PM. No, in that time when we express the time, we have to say am and am means what what is the level from anti meridian okay so our answer is what our answer is anti meridian we say 12 midnight to 11 59 noon at that time we have to always use the word am and am means we have to learn today anti meridian Okay, students. So the next question is uh, also from this related time related. That is question number twenty, and it is the last question from the short question answer sheet. That is, what do you say? Twelve noon to eleven fifty nine midnight. In that case, we use the word PM, isn't it, students? That 11.59 to 12 midnight, in that time, we have we are always using the word PM. And PM means what? The elaborate form of PM is 
post meridian post meridian okay dear so this is our last question okay so students can i ask you some question from our today's discussion okay so get ready for the question the first question for you how many months are there in 3 years so what should we do here to find out the answer yes we have to apply here multiplication because we know that one hour, year means how many months 12 months and we have to find out the answer the 3 years means how many months so if we know that 1 year means 12 months so 3 years means 2 year multiplied by 3 so it will be answer will be what 36 months ok students very good that you have got the point from this question that we have to do here the multiplication now the second question for you the question is how will you express two third in disease this type of question already we have discussed in our short question answer okay yes we have to write two as our numerator and third means we have to write 3 as our denominator. Very good. So, our answer is like 2 by 3. Well done students. So, now students, it's time for diary writing. All of you take out your diary and write down the diary. Today, uh, your homework is you have to learn the short question answer 1 to 20 at home. So students, I hope that all of you have finished your right writing. No more students. Now, it's time for leave the class. See you in next. Till then, Allah Hafiz and take care.